Hey, beautiful people. It's your girl, April Sanpe, back with another episode of Veg Out Live, where we dive deep into your lifestyle. Today, we'll be talking with a woman who's known for delivering commentary that keeps you in the know. She's vegan. She's sexy. She's cool. She is Jackie Reed. Now, before I introduce you, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. All right, y'all. Come on. Let's get started. The absolutely beautiful, amazing, and incredible Miss Jackie Reed. Hey, gorgeous one. Hey, how are you, April? Um, in the words of me, magically delicious. I love that. <laughs> love that. Yes, yes, yes. How are you getting through this wonderful quarantine? You know, thankfully, uh, family and friends are safe and healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, too, am safe and healthy. I have respiratory issues. So for me, once this all started, I paid close attention to it and I really went the extra mile early on. I started taking precautions. I stopped um, going to work. I was lucky enough to be able to, you know, be at home before the rest of my team was working from home. Yeah. Um, and so I've been good. I'm very cautious about this. I really, um, I don't go anywhere except for out for, I, I walk every morning for an hour. I walk my dogs. I do have anxiety. So for me, just managing the stress of it all um, is something that I have to keep a close eye on. And so, you know, I have early on, it was bad and then it got really good and then it got a little bad again. And now, you know, I have to make sure that I take steps to self-care. So I am good. What are those steps that you take? Because... I know for me, I have been doing a lot more meditation than normal just to make sure that I am able to focus on my breathing, to make sure that I'm okay with myself. What, what do you do to make sure that you are maintaining your composure? Well, one of the main things that I do is that I don't try to take on too much. I don't try to, you know, a lot of people are like, okay, I'm working from home. I got all this extra time because I'm not commuting. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Let me fill all of this extra time with everything I ever wanted to do. Or let me create this. You know, everybody's on IG live, you know, constantly and people are, you know, launching this and launching that. And I think that that's fantastic. Um, but for somebody like me, doing too much can be overwhelming. Um, so I had to kind of clear things out and what I did was in the first few weeks I let myself go on kind of like a wellness journey where I would you know I would let myself wake up when I wanted to wake up and I would try to do some kind of workout if I did anything and I felt anxious about it or I felt uncomfortable about about it I would stop so I only did the things that I had to do and anything else I wouldn't like even with my you know, my blog, uh, I would start writing a post. And if I felt like it, I was overwhelmed to it, I would stop mm -hmm. and I would put it to the side. And I just, you know, was very intentional about how I, you know, spent my spare time. I try to go outside and walk for an hour. I want to meditate that I, I, I shouldn't say that I can't. I haven't figured out the right way for me. And I make sure that I get a lot of sleep. You're having some issues when it comes to meditating or that you're not, you haven't found that right. Yeah. Now, how have you, what, what methods have you used? I really try and just, just be still. I try to sit early in the morning quietly and just try to clear my mind, but I'm, it, my mind is very busy. And so I'm all, next thing I know I'm in the grocery store or I'm, you know, I'm re redecorating a room or I'm thinking about a conversation that I had that I'm upset about or like my mind just. I think that we all, we all suffer from the same thing, but that's what meditation is. So it's funny that you say that because everyone says that, including myself, mm -hmm. but being able to find, or, or I'm sorry, being able to realize that meditation is really just being able to organize your thoughts as opposed to clearing them. People always think that it's oh. getting rid of your thoughts, clearing your mind. It's more decluttering your mind. 
Okay. So when you actually look at it from that perspective, then it's not nearly as complicated. You talked about your blogging. Um, and when you talked about your blogging, you were saying that you, you would actually write something and then maybe step away from it. So talk to me a little bit about what you blog about. Well, my uh, website, vegansexycool.com, which is my baby. <laughs> uh, I talk about my journey through veganism because I'm really new to it. I'm two and a half years in. So I talk about what I have learned and what I am learning. And it really is a lifestyle uh, website. So it's not just food, it's fashion, it's beauty, it's wellness, it's everything. I am not just a vegan in the kitchen, I'm vegan across the board. So that's what I wear, what I put on my face, what I put in my hair. I make sure that none of it um, involves harming animals. So yeah, I just, I really, you know, I really try to put my personality into it. And as a journalist, I try to include a lot of facts and research and just information for people because I hope that it can serve as a guide for people that not only want information about veganism if they are already vegan but if they're thinking about going vegan I have a regular series called vegan 101 where I talk about some things that I've learned along the way early on uh, as a vegan that might be helpful to people that are new to it have you written any articles or have you done any uh, interviews involving anyone who's vegan outside of vegan sexy cool? No. Well, I mean, I guess I have because, you know, I do a television show um, in New York and Boston, a lifestyle and entertainment show. So I am often, um, you know, we do inter we do lifestyle. So we're talking, we go to restaurants and talk about, you know, places to eat. We talk about plays and things like that. So often outside of Vegan Sexy Cool, which is not just a website, but a podcast as well, I do end up interviewing people and talking about veganism whenever I can. Um, but it's usually in the lifestyle lane. So it's usually restaurants or celebrities who are vegan and just happen to come by the show. And I'll talk to them a little bit about that, but not in a big way outside okay. of Vegan Sexy Cool. What's the best restaurant in New York to go to? Oh, that's tough. That's tough because there's so many great vegan restaurants. Um, I'll give you my top four. So I love, I don't even know which one to go to first. Like, if, let me think if I could go somewhere right now, I would probably go to Urban Vegan Kitchen because I love their kind of home cooked style that they put on everything from their fried okra to their uh, vegan chicken and waffles to their uh, vegan po' boy sandwich, which is amazing. Um, their food is so good. And then I love PS Kitchen, which makes incredible vegan food and Greedy Vegan in, in Brooklyn. You know, they do fried fish like I need her recipe fried fish and grits and she fries these mushrooms like she like chicken fries the mushrooms so they go with grits and oh, oh, oh her <laughs> food is amazing and then blossom is another uh one of my favorites um and that's in in midtown so and they make the best they have delicious food a great variety of food but their nachos and their um their vegan calamari which they mm. make with like trumpet mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot. It's so good. Like there's so many great restaurants, but those are probably the ones that I go to um, more than anywhere else. Because you are now vegan, what's the one thing that you originally thought before going vegan, vegan, and now see, no, that's not the truth. Or what's, What's that one aha moment that you've had since becoming a vegan? I think, I, I think early on, I think one thing that's different about me now, as opposed to when I started was I, uh, I couldn't, I just wanted everybody to be vegan. I was like, why are you eating meat? I was just like that girl that was like in your face. Like you need to try, like, I was just like trying to, you know, convert everybody and change everybody. Like, and I was so passionate and a little obnoxious about it. I, I know probably a lot of obnoxious, but I have since chilled out mm -hmm. and I kind of, except for with my mom, I'm 
determined to switch her because I want her to live forever. But um, I have chilled out and I've kind of adopted a live and let live uh, kind of philosophy when it comes to veganism. I, I'm telling you, I was so aggressive with it. It was crazy. And I was like, I don't know what's happening to me, but I want you to go vegan. So I've, <laughs> I've calmed down tremendously. So that's the other thing. Um, you know, I really thought that it, it, it amazes me how offended people are by just the thought of veganism. You know what I mean? And I don't know if that's guilt that they feel because they want to do this, but they, it's so foreign to them, they don't know how, and they don't want you to like, it's kind of like watching those videos of animals in cages and you turn the channel or seeing, you know, um, you know, video or advertisements for, for, you know, raising money for kids and people are like, oh, I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it or turning the other way when you see homeless people. It's kind of like that. What's the most extreme, crazy, outrageous way that someone has tried to convert you back to eating meat? I don't think they would dare because I'm so passionate about it and I'm always talking about it. Not always. Well, not as much as I used to, but even at Thanksgiving last year, thank God, my cousin who cooks Thanksgiving dinner, she and her husband, like she is like a flexitarian, but her husband is vegan. So she knows how to make all kinds of vegan fixings. Um, and she's such a great cook, but everybody else there, you know, they're eating chitlins and ham and turkey and all kinds of the things that I used to eat, you know, mm -hmm. two and a half years ago. And no one really tries to convert me. It's like, they see me coming. They already know. I'm such a strong-minded person and I'm not shy and I'm very vocal. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll go to a family gathering and if they don't have vegan food, I'll make something or I'll go and get something. Like, I'll, I eat, you know, I'm not shy about it, but I'm also not rude about it. But I don't think anybody has done anything extreme to me. I'm... No, not nothing, nothing no. so far, but it hasn't been, hasn't been too long, but no, nothing yet. That's surprising. Really? <laughs> That's surprising to hear. What, yeah. what do you feel was the hardest part or the, the most challenging part of your transition? Making sure that I got enough protein mm -hmm. uh, because you can, um, you know, you can lean into eating just what's delicious and you can miss out on proteins that you actually need. And so I fixed that. And the, the other thing is carb overloading. Mm -hmm. You can just be, well, I'm hungry. So let me just eat some bread or I'm hungry. So let me just eat some chips or let me just eat something, you know, pasta, rice, you know, other grains. And I went a little too overboard with kind of like carb overloading, but now you know, now I'm at a really healthy place. I figured it all out thanks to some friends and some experts that I talked to. So, and those are the things that I write about on Vegan Sexy Cool and I talk about because I want to make sure that people don't make those same mistakes because I didn't know. I just was like, I'm going vegan. And that was it. I didn't consult anybody. I didn't do a lot of research. I just did it. So those are the things that kind of messed me up in the beginning, but it's all good now. With Vegan Sexy Cool, I know that you interview a lot of people. You said just now you interview a lot of, you know, with talking to the experts. Tell me which expert or which maybe vegan celebrity or whoever that you've met with that gave you the best advice. I'm trying to think who told me this first. It really wasn't a celebrity. It was someone that works for Eric Adams, who's a Brooklyn Borough president, who's a big time vegan. Um, Rachel, and I can't think of Rachel's last name, but she really leads up a lot of his efforts in the vegan community as far as, you know, he does a lot of stuff when it comes to veganism. And I went to dinner with her one time and I was telling her about, you know, me just getting so frustrated with people and wanting them to stop eating meat and slaughtering animals. And she was just like, you know, I used to be like that too, but you really just have to chill out and you just have to count you know, the difference that you're making and see that the world is changing. Veganism is everywhere. She just really helped me kind of rethink everything and just calm down. Yeah. Um, I think that's the main thing when it comes to advice. I mean, there is a girlfriend of mine who is, she's not vegan, but she's very health conscious. And she was the one that I went to about the whole protein thing. She got me to really 
wrap my head around how to really get protein in every meal that I eat. Her name is Coach Jazz, Jazz Graham. And she was very helpful to me because that was one of the biggest hurdles, just trying to, because I'm someone that likes to be fit and I want to continue to build and maintain muscle. So talking to her helped me, you know, get the protein part of it right. But um, yeah, I mean, I learned all kinds of things, particularly about from nutritional experts, mm -hmm. um, you know, learning about things like speaking of nutritional, about nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. right? I can't remember who told me about that, but it is now one of my favorite things. Where can we find Vegan Sexy Cool? Everywhere. <laughs> well, the Vegan Sexy Cool podcast is the first place that I would point people um, because it is. Oh, it's my baby. And it is ongoing. VeganSexyCool.com, I'm happy to say, is under construction for the next six weeks because we have a new logo you may have seen and we have just some new elements. So we're changing to a new theme or a new format. I have a Facebook group called the Vegan Sexy Cool Squad. Mm -hmm. So be sure and join back. Give me a minute to, you know, accept you because it is a, a closed group. But if you go and just kind of make the request, I'll get around to letting you in. And that's really a great place if you're just starting the journey, because it really is going to be a space for newbies, which I'm really happy about. And then, you know, just follow me on social media at Vegan Sexy Cool, you know, everywhere. I have a TikTok account, but I have not ticked or talked. So we'll see what's going to happen with that. <laughs> so with Vegan Sexy Cool, who, what, what's your targeted audience? It's people like you. I mean, I want primarily women of color because we're the ones in most households who decides what's going to be eaten, right? We, we decide what food is going to be on the table, what's going to come from the grocery store into the kitchen of the household. And I think, you know, that it is in the black community more than any other community where we need to start thinking about what we're eating and the way that we're eating and that is made so plain with everything that's going on with COVID-19 and who's dying from it more than anyone, mm -hmm. African-Americans. Why? Because of pre-existing conditions, conditions that could be reversed if we were eating better. I, I have to go just a little bit further when we talk about, you know, the Black communities. If you notice that the average food desert is in, a, in, the, in predominantly Black communities. Yeah. What would you say about that? What, what, is, what, what do you think that we can do about changing it? When you are a vegan, you st your world begins to expand. Mm -hmm. You notice things outside of just what's going on with you and you know, just your friends and your family, but you start paying attention to the community around you more and then the world. So I think that it begins with that. It begins with paying attention that these problems exist. Mm -hmm. So if you live in a community, for example, that is not considered a food desert, then you're paying attention to communities that are, and you start being a part Part of the solution, you know, whether you're helping to man a farmer's market, whether you're doing a, you know, a, a, whether you're teaching lessons, you know, in a community, whether you're doing, you know, what you're, you're putting information, you know, whether you're hosting a podcast or something out there, you're putting information out there that's for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, How often do you drop a new podcast? Every week. Okay. Every week. Yeah. But next week will be my last one for and then six weeks i won't be back until after the july 4th holiday okay so okay. but there are a lot of great episodes there i interviewed rizza from the wu-tang clan and was shocked to know you probably know this that the majority of the members of the wu-tang clan are all like serious all vegans. Vegans. like yeah. like they are cooking their own food and growing things like they are hardcore um vegans and i interviewed june ambrose who everybody knows from the fashion world she is a plant-based eater so i talked to her um oh i talked to slutty vegan who has the restaurant peaky cole down in atlanta i have some there's so many chefs and people in the fashion world with vegan um you know shoe lines and bag lines and things like that it's just a I think back and I've interviewed so many amazing people. I think I've done about 16 or 17 episodes. So it's really, really um, good stuff. Really good interviews. What's next after that? What's, what is it that you want the public to look for? Um, just look out for 
the new and improved website for the podcast once we get going again even better guests and i also forgot to say i have a youtube channel as well um for vegan sexy cool and you can see some restaurant uh reviews that i've done i put a fashion piece on there focused on vegan fashion and then i you know, I record my podcast, I video record my podcast, so you can see my actual guests, and we're going in and re-editing those, because they were really too long, Mm -hmm. Um, and we really wanted to make it more YouTube user-friendly, so that's part of what we'll be doing over the six-week hiatus. I love what you're bringing to the table. Um, I want everybody to follow you on Vegan Sexy Cool everywhere (laughs) thank you um, i love the concept so thank you so much for everything that you bring to the table thank you and i got to get you on vegan sexy cool too you just let me know when where and i'm there i definitely will i'm gonna since my six week hiatus is happening i'll let you get moved and then we'll do the other side (laughs) definitely Hey, beautiful people. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure you're following Jackie Reed and Vegan Sexy Cool. All right, you guys. Much love. Bye. Follow me at A-P-R-I-L-P-R-I-S-A-M-P-E. What's up, y'all? I need y'all to follow me. Stop Oh my god. My name is April Sampay. I'm coming at you live and direct. From right now, I'm sitting here on social media Every trying day. to make sure that you all understand the words that are coming out of my face. Can you hear me? Everywhere. Is this entertaining for you? 